asked Riley, but what's it like to be on a trading card? Uh, it's definitely exciting, man. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool, obviously. We, everybody knows what trading cards are, so to be a part of you know something like that, it's exciting. Do you ever like collect them growing up as a kid or anything, or do you ever like think you could be on a card? Uh, like for a phase, yeah. Not too long, though, but it was cool there. <laughs> going to do anything in particular with these cards uh, that was display in your house keep a couple uh, like, I'll probably just keep a couple I don't know I know my mom I already told my mom about it she's excited so yeah <laughs> how much do you enjoy playing football next to DJ DJ is great man DJ is not only a great player he's a great person great brother man he's the uh, connection and the bond we have just us linebackers when we're on the field man it's great you know and uh, we're always there to celebrate with each other when we make a play so uh, Spencer said that he's a guy that I'm it's like everybody's favorite guy. Why is that? Uh, DJ brings energy, man, every day. You know, uh, obviously there can be some days where the team is down, but not DJ, man. DJ is one of those guys who he brings energy at practice and helps elevate everybody's game. Um, and man, it's great. With San Diego State, there was, you started that game by running a lot of stuff into the ball. Most yeah. of the guys on that side of the field kind of take on personal talent. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is uh, we, we knew what they wanted, and a lot of their plays was to the boundary, and, and they knew that, um, the guys to the boundary, uh, and they were obviously up to the task for it. So. The sack you had on third down, uh, you can just feel the electricity in the stadium. It was one of those big plays. What goes through your body when you make a play like that? Everybody is just cheering. Man, it's great. It's a great feeling, man. And then, obviously, the, we always talk about celebrating with our teammates, man. So, um we always talk about whoever makes the play, you know, obviously they make the play, but it's always the defense together. So we talk about celebrating with each other and, you know, that's what happens. How big have the false starts been with the crowds causing the last Man, it's so much fun. It's huge, man. Bronco Nation is always there for us, man, especially uh, on that south end zone. Uh, this is definitely great, man. The noise, you can definitely hear it, even on the defensive side. That's how we talk about communication with uh, our mouth and our gestures. It's really important for us to do that because it's really hard. It really is hard to hear down here, so. And, and I know, I mean, it helps you guys too. Whether if it pushes them, there was one time where they had first and goal, I think, at the five, and it pushed them back, and then it was another third and short, I think. I mean, I'm, I mean from an actual, like, tactical standpoint, how much does it help you when, when they're pushing the offense back? Five years? Man, it's huge. It's, it's huge for the defense. You know, obviously, uh, when they get, uh, you know, just cheap cheap yards that they make mistakes on, and we can capitalize off it on the defensive side. So. When you go to that silent camp <clears throat> because of the noise, how, how much does that help you guys too? Because you become a little bit more predictable at times. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, a lot, of, a lot of the when teams end up doing that, they can you know clap with the quarterback or even the guard will even tap the center. We've seen that happening. Uh, it's definitely an indicator that can help us on the defensive side with our get offs with the guys up front. And uh, so yeah. What's your first reaction when you see like after a couple of those false starts, the offensive linemen are looking at each other and like what's your mind when when, when they kind of hit that point? Yeah, it's great, man. We we know we got them on the ropes at that time. You know, especially during that drive. You know, they're, they're on their heels now, and, and it's that's to our advantage for sure, and, and we always got to capitalize off of it. So, How tough, I mean, was two weeks ago you had to sit out. Um, how, how tough was that to be on the sidelines, and you know, was it tough to get back uh, in time? Yeah, it was obviously tough uh, not being able to play that week. Uh, but a lot of it was me, my role that week. For me, I just felt like I had to support the team as much as I could. You know, obviously uh, with, the, with the linebackers that filled in for me, um, but yeah, and then just watching the game, you know, obviously we had mistakes happen and that was too much of it. Um, so that obviously that next week I was definitely excited to, you know, get back in there and, and help the guys out. So they obviously announced that Hainer's out, but what do you see from the other QB? Uh, he's, he's definitely a great quarterback. He, he can make the throws, uh, and I can see he could, he could run a little bit, you know, so uh, we obviously got to be aware of that still. Uh, but no, man, with, with that new quarterback coming in, um, he could definitely make those throws. We still got to be aware of it because we know, uh, how important. And how good their receiving core is. So. Uh, you played on a defense that was like protected. Um, for me, no. Uh, we, you know, that's why we practice. You know, and the, and the a lot of the stuff we do off the field, man. I mean, it's really important for us to have that camaraderie um, on the defensive side, and and for us to be able to transition it, you know, on the field. And you know, yeah. How, how does it play to your benefit on the field? Though? I mean, this you guys are sound and about everything. Yeah, on, on the defense side, man, uh, we, we know, you know, who we're playing with, man, we, and who we're playing for, you know, the brothers to our right, the brothers to our left, um, the communication that we have pre-snap and post-snap, you know, it's so important for us to have each and every play. And, and, and um, the most important thing for us right now that I feel like we need to continue to do is just be consistent with it. 
because um, we can we can go up and down sometimes as far as the defense. But as far as you know, just being out there with the guys, it's really important to know who you're talking to and how to talk to them, and so that we can always be on the same page. Right? What do you guys do schematically in the red zone that makes this team successful? Yeah, a lot of it in the red zone. Obviously, they have uh, they still got the width of the field, but not so much vertical. So. Um, we, we play tight covers, definitely. Um, and we always got to be aware of, you know, the QBs and their runs because we know they do that uh, to have an extra blocker out there. So a lot of it is just playing tight, playing tight in that defense. It feels like you're making a bigger impact at this point in the season, <clears throat> maybe than you were last year at this point in the season. Have you noticed anything like, what, why are you having maybe such a better year now than maybe you had last year? Um, going back to the, you know, the camaraderie and the, and the, uh, the tightness that we have on that defensive side, not only, you know, obviously for the backers, we, we have to uh, really be um, on point with not only the front, but the coverage as well, because, we, we, you know, we got to work with both. So obviously on the defense side, we always know that the front and back end always work together. And the linebacker core is, is the one that keeps it together, um, that plays both ones. So it, it's really important for us to uh, be able to, you know, stay on point each and every day at practice. Um, so, yeah. Well, going back to the, that play with Jordan, can you just take us through that from the start to finish? And Obviously, George kind of had a, had, a, had a shot that day, but just take us through the play, start to finish on that. Yeah, um, we was in max drop, you know, and uh, I was the whole spy player. I was just, just I was ready for, you know, um, the quarterback to hold it a little longer just because, you know, we didn't have more than, we only had three rushers at the time. So uh, for the linebackers, we knew that uh, if, he, if he had uh, left the pocket, it's, it's important for us to help the D-line contain him. You know, and so as soon as I seen him out the pocket, I want to go help him out. So, and that's what happened. Did you, did you, did you, what was going through your mind when George was trying to pick that thing up? Yeah, I, I, I didn't know it came out right away. And then I seen George try to pick it up, and he didn't pick it up. <laughs> nah, man, but it, it was cool. You know, obviously, it, just, it was still exciting and, and a fun play to, you know, just to be out there. So. You, said, you said celebrate with your brothers. You, oh, yeah. You, you took that quite literally after that play. Um, yeah. Is that, is that a guy you target after you? You know, he's, you know he's coming on the field for special teams. Is that, is that just coincidental? <laughs> you find your bro? Um, I, I didn't know. I mean, yes, I know that, you know, when special teams, that punt return comes out, he always comes on the field next, you know, and when that's their time. So, yeah, obviously, I I mean, I, I want to shake his hand all the time just to be like, come on, let's go, let's get it, you know, stuff like that. But, yeah, it was definitely exciting. <laughs>